Hey there folks, Andrew Swan here. Today is just a brief update to my AVS meter tutorial video that I just put out recently. And that's to let you know that there is a graphical alternative to the installation checking function of AVS meter. It's called AVI Synth Info Tool, and it's developed by Groucho2004, who also wrote AVS meter. So, without further ado, if you go to the AVI Synth Wiki and go down to the Utilities link, and then go on down to Debugging slash Diagnostic Utilities, you'll find AVS Meter, but also AVI Synth Info Tool. So if you click on that, it'll take you to the appropriate post on the Doom 9 forums. And you can just click on the download link there, which will take you to Groucho's download page. And you can grab AVS Info Tool, whatever version is up there, from there. Uh, as of the recording of this video, it's version 106. So go ahead and download that. Or scan it. Uh, in this case, Zhongmen and Rising are antivirus programs that have a higher rate than normal of false positives. So uh, the fact that none of these other programs have detected anything means I'm more inclined to think of this as false positives. However, if you are working on some sort of a mission critical system, you know, uh, maybe consider just using ABS meter or not using any of this stuff. <laughs> so once you've downloaded and virus scanned AVS Info Tool, uh, installation is pretty simple. You open up the archive, just extract it out. And uh, Groucho has actually included a installer. So you don't even have to create the, your own folder yourself. You can just literally just double click on it and do next, next. Create a desktop shortcut if you want. Uh, I'm going to do that here. Next, install. And you can, of course, choose a different folder to set it up in if you want. Um, normally I would do that, but for today I'm just going to hit the defaults. So, um, when you run AVI Synth Info Tool, uh, know that maybe the first run will be a bit slow to start. Uh, but if you run it again subsequently, it should be a bit quicker. And uh, it'll go through, check your stuff. If there's any issues, it'll have this little pop-up here that says errors warnings detected. Select show plugin errors warnings to view them. And uh, if you click on show plugin errors warnings, it'll automatically scroll down to the bottom of the screen where uh, any errors pop up. In this case, it's reminding me that uh, Smart Decimate is not supported by AVI Synth Plus, which is a pretty useful thing to know. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that because I have both AVI Synth Plus 32-bit and 64-bit installed, I can use InfoTool to check both of those. If you only have a 32-bit version, then the 64-bit functionality will give you an error, and vice versa. So that's all pretty cool. And uh, if you want to save out the results of this into a text file, you can just click on Save Info and you know, select where you want the uh, text file to be saved out. Click Save, and boom, you get an exact printout of what AVI Synth Info Tool displays. So, the one bit of functionality, though, that's been added to this release that I particularly appreciate has to do with the FFTW library. 
Uh, this is something that's required by QTGMC and some of its dependent plugins, but there's some other plugins that rely on it as well. And so what AVI Synth Info Tool will do is scan your system directories to make sure that you have the specific uh, library file installed. If you don't, it will give you an error. So to show you what that looks like, let me go over to my Windows and let's remove uh, the version from SysWow64. So it's this libfftw3f-3.dll. Okay, so if I remove that and then run AVI Synth Info Tool and go down to Plugin Errors and Warnings, you'll see there's three additional errors here because there's three plugins that rely on the FFTW library, DFT test, FFT 3D filter, and MV tools 2. And it gives you kind of a little note about um, where you can get the FFTW library and where it should be installed. So general rule of thumb is, uh, while you do need the 64-bit version of the FFTW library for some 64-bit AVI synth plugins, you install it in the System32 directory. And likewise, if you need to use FFTW for a 32-bit AVI synth plugin, you're going to be using the 32-bit version installed in your SysWow64 folder. It's this weird sort of opposite setup thing. Anyway, that's basically the way it works. But um, if you don't have anything in your AVI Synth install that requires uh, the FFTW library, then you won't get any error messages about it, uh, even if you don't have it installed. So. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, you can give it a thumbs down if you want, but I'd prefer if you have some constructive criticism to just leave it in the comments down below and let me know. For pretty much the rest of this year, I'm going to be doing short videos, and I don't know how often I'll be doing them uh, because I'm preparing to teach a class. But I'm going to try and put out a few more just to uh, try to introduce people to some tools that they may not know about. You can look forward to seeing more of those if you subscribe. With that, all I can really say is until next time, Happy video editing.